Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In the last class, we had seen uh, the performance of a turbojet. We had derived equations for the non-dimensional thrust, as well as uh, we had uh, derived expressions for ISP of a turbojet. Now, uh, let's put in some typical numbers and see what is it that we get out of it, and uh, we'll see some interesting facets of it. Okay. So, firstly, we'll look at uh, uh, optimal optimal expansion of flow in the nozzle uh, here uh, there are two conditions that we need to look at one is sea level thrust or sea level ISP and what happens at cruise conditions. So uh, at sea level uh, P naught is equal to One atmosphere or one uh, point one uh, megapascals, and uh, T naught would be if we assume an IS ISA atmosphere model, then it will be two eighty eight Kelvin. And M naught is zero. At sea level, before take at takeoff conditions, and now, if we assume the compression ratio pi c to be very low, that is pi c to be of the order of around four, then my tau c would be something like one point four eight four, and if we take T T four to be thousand Kelvin, then this makes theta B is equal to something like three point four, and uh, we know the Q of the fuel. This is kerosene, so forty two megajoules per kg. And let us take the CP of air and flow gases to be the same, and let us take it to be 1 kilojoule per kg Kelvin. Okay. So, with this uh, conditions, now you have to find out what is it at the, the cruise altitude of around 11 kilometers. So, Altitude. What are the things that are going to change? The things that are going to change are these two only: atmospheric conditions, and at cruise conditions, this Mach number will also change. So we need to change the only three parameters: P naught would be lower, and it would be somewhere around twenty-two point six. Kilo Pascals and T naught would be that 
this is uh, you have taken ISE international standard atmosphere so therefore we get this now if we use this and calculate f by m dot a a naught and isp okay we have all the parameters here to calculate both of them uh, we'll get this kind of a table m naught is equal to 0 then I will also put V7, V0, both these in meters per second, and lastly, ISP in. kilo Newton second per kg okay. So, if we take uh, the sea level performance that is at sea level m naught is equal to 0 and uh, using this we will get f by m dot a a naught as 1.8 and this would be something like 612 meters per second and this would be 0 and ISP would be something like this. Now at 11 kilometers m naught would be 0 0.8 and this would reduce slightly to 1.76 okay. Now there are two things to notice one is that irrespective of the altitude you see that f by m dot a a naught is nearly constant right. Uh, this happens because of two things one notice that uh, at sea level this is large the velocity differential is large okay the mass flow rate is very small velocity differential is large mass flow rate is very small. So, you end up uh, getting a high thrust because of the velocity differential at a higher altitude the velocity differential is reduced, but you have air coming in now at this velocity therefore, what you get is a larger mass flow rate. So, you get a larger mass flow rate with a smaller velocity differential therefore, you get nearly the same thrust or same non dimensional thrust what happens to ISP? ISP has is, uh, come down which means that SFC has gone up if I were to uh, write SFC also here SFC would be in kg per kgr this would be something like 0.8. this would be like 1.06. So, we are cruising at an altitude wherein the SFC is low why do we do that? I think it would be more beneficial if we were to stay on ground or close to ground and carry out our operations is not that from the looks of it what we see is that the ISP has come down or SFC has increased. So, why do you think if this is happening or this is desirable, not desirable, what is the opinion? You have one say something, no? Uh, 
Huh? So what happens? No, not really. Uh, well, actually, the reason why we operate it at a higher altitude is primarily the drag is less at a higher altitude, right? You are not looking at drag of the engine per se, you are looking at the drag of the entire aircraft. Wherein, when I was discussing about turbofan engines, I said G goes in for a bypass ratio of 9 and says that uh, the engine or the nasal drag is very small compared to the overall drag and therefore they go in for a large uh, bypass ratio, right. Now what we are looking at is the drag of the entire aircraft goes down as altitude increases because road, in, road decreases as you go up in altitude, right. Now density decreases, drag decreases, but your SFC will increase because what we have set in here is if you notice I did not change this part TT4. TT4 is the same at both the altitudes and if you look at theta b in this case theta b would be because T naught is lower. So theta b for T T4 of equal to 1000 Kelvin would be Four point six three. That is, what we are saying is, you need more fuel to bring the air from a lower temperature after compression to thousand Kelvin because we have set that temperature. So therefore, we will find that the SFC will be higher, right? Okay, and that's the reason we see this. Now we can uh, look at similar numbers for. Uh, choke flow through the nozzle, the only thing that changes uh, would be, I will just put them here itself, Now here we will assume a slightly larger compression ratio of around 12 which means that tau c would also go up it would be as much we will can also increase the turbine inlet temperature. And this means theta b will go up to the rest of the quantities remain the same here again sorry I had written 100 Kelvin here and you not pointed it out it was to be 1000 Kelvin earlier and uh, that makes it 4.63 okay. <clears throat> and that is why we saw that change in uh, uh, ISP or SFC. Now if we change it to 1200 Kelvin, theta b would be 5.55 and this would mean correspondingly all these quantities will change. Because now we have choke flow in the nozzle the thrust consists of two parts one is uh, the convective flux part and the pressure thrust part. So, this will again have two parts one point
and at an altitude This is what we see. Notice that as you go up an altitude, the fraction of the pressure thrust is increasing. Okay. It is a lower fraction here, right? Or if you look at this number, it is a lower fraction here compared to a higher fraction here, right? For the overall thrust. Why does this happen? Why does pressure thrust part increase as you go up in altitude? Ah, yeah. Ambient pressure if you see is one fifth, so uh, the pressure thrust part is going to increase if you go up in altitude. Okay. And again you see the same feature here that SFC has increased and that is primarily because you need to heat the air from a lower temperature to a set temperature of 1200 here instead of. Uh, 1000 earlier. So, therefore, you will find that SFC is higher in this case. Okay, Fine. Okay then, uh, we have dealt with uh, two things. We have looked at uh, optimal optimally expanded flow through the nozzle and we have looked at choke nozzle. Okay. Now, let us look at what happens if you have the after burner on and uh, the other method of uh, increasing the thrust that is water methanol injection. Let us look at these two methods and how to derive expressions for them. Okay. So, firstly let us look at uh, what happens if we have the after burner on. I will retain these set of numbers because I want to use this to look at what happens without the afterburner with the afterburner conditions. So, I will retain this numbers and we will get back to a similar table at the end of the discussion on afterburners. Now, if we look at the TS diagram with the afterburner on, uh, we will again assume eta to be 1. Okay. So, you have isentropic compression through the intake as well as through the compressor, then you have heat addition in the main combustor, expansion through the turbine So, this is 0, 2. Okay. <coughs> so, uh, this is the T S diagram for efficiencies 1 and 
with the afterburner. Which one? Okay. <coughs> now, what do we have to do if we have to analyze this? Okay. Firstly, our uh, expression for uh, f by m dot a a naught, the non-dimensional thrust would be m naught into, in this case, one plus f plus I will call, I will introduce a new parameter F A B M 7 by M naught into under root T 7 by right. This is the expression uh, for non dimensional thrust. Now, if you put F A B equal to 0, this is the expression that we had derived for a turbojet without the afterburner switched on, right. When F A B goes to 0, this is the expression that we get. Now, we have F A B, where F A B is nothing but m dot fuel that is added in the afterburner divided by m dot air. Okay. So, it is the fuel air ratio in the afterburner. So, what do you think of the value of this plus this? What is the maximum of F and F plus AB that it can go to? It can maximum go to stoichiometric, which is what is the value? it is 0 0.067 which is the stoichiometric value you cannot burn more than that. So, it goes to something like 0 0.067. Now, if you go to 0 0.067 I can still use the condition that F plus F A B is less than 1 right with an error of around 6.7 percent. So, I will use that I will say F plus F A B is very much less than 1 okay so that we can take this terms off and uh, i'll also introduce another parameter here just like we had tt4 by t naught as a control parameter we have a new control parameter that is tt6 by t naught right what is the maximum temperature in the cycle divided by T naught the minimum temperature. So, I will call T T 6 by T naught as equal to theta A B. Remember we had T T 4 by T naught as equal to theta burner similar to that I am introducing a new control parameter to account for the afterburn. Okay. So, using this I need still these ratios T 7 by T naught and M 7 by M naught. So, I can get T 7 by T naught as <coughs> T T 7 into T T 6 by okay. T sorry this has to be T T 6. these two cancel off and I will get T 7 by T naught. 
what is uh, T7 by T T7? It is the ratio of static to stagnation. So, I can express this in terms of Mach number, this would be 1 plus 1 by 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m 7 square. What is T 7 by T T 7 by T T 6? This is flow through the nozzle, right. So, flow through the nozzle, we have assumed the flow to be isentropic. So, T T, the total temperature does not change. So, this is 1 and T T 6 by T T naught, we have defined it as theta A B. So, I get T 7 by T naught as equal to theta A B by M 7 square. Now, we need to do cascading of pressures to get the other parameter of, uh, after burner, yes the nozzle will be choked always huh? nozzle will be always choked yes true so why are we doing the for the optimal because in case of even other in optimally expanded if you use a conversion nozzle it's still choked we will do both cases okay firstly we'll take the optimal expanded flow then we'll look at what happens if the nozzle is uh, choked the nozzle being choked uh, does not essentially mean that P 7 is equal to P naught. It can be that P 7 is greater than P naught even if the nozzle is choked, right. So, we are taking a special case of choke flow wherein the exit pressure is equal to the ambient pressure. Now, if we do cascading of pressures. I get P 7 by P naught is equal to this is what we get and The first term here is ratio again ratio of static to stagnation pressure. This is flow through uh, nozzle, flow through jet pipe and then flow through uh, turbine, flow through the main combustor, flow through compressor and this would be flow through intake and that is theta naught to the power of gamma by gamma minus 1. So, we will put that down here. And we know because we are considering optimally expanded flow, what is P 7 by P naught? This would be equal to unity. So, we will use that. So, we can write 1 is equal to 1 by M 7 square 
into flow through nozzles we are assuming all efficiencies to be 1 then flow through after burner again 1 then flow through uh, compressor you get phi t then sorry flow through turbine then you have flow through combustor which is 1 then you have flow through uh, compressor phi c and you have flow through the intake which is 1 and lastly theta naught to the power of gamma by gamma minus 1 and here also sorry. So I get I can rewrite these two in terms of tau t so I will get 1 is equal to 1 by or 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m7 square is equal to tau t tau c theta naught okay and i know from the definition of theta naught that 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m0 square is equal to theta naught so using these two i can get my expression for uh, m7 by m0 I can write M7 as equal to 2 by gamma minus 1 tau t tau c theta naught minus 1 and M naught similarly would be and we required in our expression for T7 by T0 this term so I can get that too so I can write T7 by T0 as equal to theta AB by tau T tau C theta0 minus 1 okay so <coughs> sorry not, no no minus 1 sorry so this is the expression that we have now we can substitute back and get our expression for the non dimensional thrust which is f by m dot a a not is equal to or I minus I can rewrite this part by taking this out as common I can rewrite this as
So, this is the expression that we get for the non dimensional thrust. Now, there is still one part missing, we know that there is a turbine compressor power balance. So, these two are not independent variables and they are connected. Okay. So, let us get that expression also. We had derived that expression for uh, a case without the uh, after burner on. Uh, do you think it will change with the after burner being switched on? Because this is something that, that happens downstream of the turbine, it does not get affected and therefore, whatever we had derived earlier holds good. So, from We get tau t is equal to 1 minus theta naught by theta b into tau c minus 1. And if you substitute this expression back, then we will get f by this is the overall expression that we get. Notice here that theta b is now a parameter of very small consequence, right. The temperature at the end of the uh, combustor is not such an important parameter whereas, for the thrust the temperature at the end of the after burner is a more important parameter. Now, let us look also at uh, the ISP part. Okay. If we have to calculate ISP, we know from our previous expression for non dimensional specific impulse that I need 1 by f into f by m dot a naught. So, here this was the expression that we had without the after burner. How would this change with the after burner? I need to include here F plus F A B for the case with the after burner. Okay. So, with the after burner on you have this additional term here. Okay. Now, how do we determine this quantity? How do we determine this quantity? what do we need to do? What did we do to get 1 by f? Combustor. Energy balance Energy across balance. the combustor. combustor. Now, what do we need to do? Energy balance across the combustor plus the after burner. So, let us do that.
by taking energy After burner, we get m dot f plus m dot f a b into q okay, must be equal to m dot a into 1 plus f c p t t 4 minus T T three plus M dot A into one plus F plus F A B. Okay. This is the portion that gets added on in the afterburner into C P T T six by minus T T five. Okay. This is the expression that we get. Now we know that we can use F is very much less than one and we also know that F plus F A B is also very much less than 1. So, using this I can eliminate these two and therefore, I will get F plus F A B that is you take it here and divide this by m dot a you will get this into q by C p must be equal to T t 6 minus T t 5 plus T t 4 minus T t 3. Okay. Now, if we look at the T s diagram If we look at the T s diagram, This is the T s diagram we have and what we have here is T t 6 minus T t 5 that is this minus this plus T t 4 minus T t 3 fine. Now, I can add this part what you will get is you will get as though it is a continuous rise from T t 3 to T t 6. Okay if I add this part, but we know that compressor turbine power balance C p being the same this portion and this portion is same. So, you have to subtract one of them if you are adding this you have to subtract this okay. and I also know that the T t 2 must be equal to T t naught right because flow through the what do you have flow through the intake what kind of process is that it is an isentropic process because we are assuming all efficiencies to be 1 it is an isentropic process total temperature does not change. 
okay. So, you get T T 2 is equal to T T naught. So, we will use that here and do a little bit of jugglery. As I said, I will add minus T T 5 minus T T 4. minus okay if you look at this i have not done anything this is what is this part turbine work in the turbine work in the compressor these two must be equal right. So, I can take this out these two are equal now I know that T T 2 by T T naught is equal to 1. So, this goes to 0. Okay. So, by doing this manipulation I have been able to uh, get this as T T 6 minus T T naught which is nothing but you are looking at raising the temperature from here to T T 6. Okay. Sorry, this was T S diagram. So, So, I can write now F plus F A B Q by C P is equal to T T 6 by minus T T naught. Now, if I divide by T naught on both sides. I get What is T T 6 by T naught? This is theta A B and what is this? This is theta naught. So, we get a new expression for we are looking for this expression 1 by F plus F plus F A B is equal to U by C P T naught theta A B minus theta naught okay. and following this I can now write I S P by A naught is equal to Q by C P T naught theta a b minus theta naught into okay. So, this is our expression for I s p with the after burner switched on I will stop here and continue.